Hello everyone, welcome to The Ranting Shop with me, Melissa, and today we're going to be talking about Ready to Love Finale Pat, not Finale, sorry, Ready to Love Reunion Pat 1, and it starts off with, you know, just like a, a revision of what took place throughout the season and stuff like that, and Tommy started speaking about lust and who was lusting and I mean, the selection wasn't to a point where I'd be lusting over anybody. That, but that's just me. So, a lot of the people didn't even really give answers as far as whether they were lusting or anything like that. But, um, yeah, like, who was there to lust about? I'm confused. Cherise talks about um, Swayze and his muscles. But beyond the muscles, like, come on, what's there to lust about? Then we hear about, um, what's his name, the guy that left early on, he has a foot fetish and just trivial things. I want to get to the nitty gritty. So they're speaking on Jamala and Randall's situation and just off the bat you can tell that something is off. Um, not even because of where they're placed because these producers are gonna sit you wherever they want you to sit for drama purposes, for curiosity purposes, for whatever purposes. They will sit you where they want you to sit. It does not mean that you and the person are in good terms or you guys are awesome or whatever. So it's not the seating, it's just the facial expressions, it's just the body language. It's making me feel as if things are not rosy on their side. Can we go back to the moment when they went on their dates and she was talking about Olive Juice and she's thanking him for kissing her? Like, that is so cringy. Who thanks somebody for kissing them? That's crazy. So Tommy is asking them, okay, so this is what we saw as viewers. What's the progress on your relationship now? And she says, they're still working on things. As I said before, the body language told it all. The body language let us know that they're not necessarily in the best of places. And nobody's truly surprised because nobody thought that Randall and Jamala were true matches, like true love matches. Like the best definition of a true love match that I can give that took place on that show was joy and clifton that's a connection you can actually see you can believe that type of connection you can see it making it through long term like it just works it just makes sense but jamal and randall it just seemed as if they decided to stick together to win so nobody's surprised that they're going through issues so soon after leaving that show this is beyond hilarious. Not Jamala talking about... Because Tommy asking her to clarify ups and downs. Because these people like to give vague answers. And basically what it is is that they're not dating exclusively. They're seeing other people. And based on how Jamala is saying it, it seems like that's Randall's idea and not her idea. Because she was so caught up in Randall on the show... And I don't think she had any other prospects. Whereas Randall was more having like a more open mindset. So I'm not surprised if he's the one that suggests that they see other people. She doesn't seem very thrilled about it. And it doesn't seem that they've spoken much about the whole situation. But nobody's surprised. For some reason, I don't believe anything Jamala says. Like, I care for Randall deeply. And he's talking about Seam. Like, I don't believe any of them. For the first time in a long time, for the first time, for the first time in never, we see Randall in a suit, which is commendable. He looks good. Um, They keep panning over to Miss, Miss um, Kayla. And Kayla looks irritated, annoyed, like, as if... She knows more than what they're choosing to say and she wants to say it, but she, I, I don't know. We'll see when they give her time to speak on the situation. I definitely noticed that Trenika also had a interesting reaction to Jamala and Randall's story. There's a lot to their story. It seems like they're not disclosing which Trenika and killer seem to know a lot about so i'm curious to know 
when they do get to speak what they will say about that situation i cannot wait now we move on to Cherise and the whole debacle her calling dominica a basically a stripper they stumble on the situation with her, what she said about dominica which was very rude and implying that she was a stripper now the thing i don't like her Cherise is as bold as she is sometimes she cowers behind words and interpretations of words like you know that you meant a stripper but you're talking about oh it could be a performing art like why would you play with people's intelligence in that way like people are not stupid you meant stripper where do you ever hear a performing arts dancer having a stage name like that's crazy obviously you meant stripper stop playing with people and um, Zoe used that as an opportunity to call her fake as F again. And I, what I, you know what I really think happened and why Zoe thinks that Cherise is fake? I feel like it was a conversation that he had with Kadian. Honestly, that's what I feel like. Kadian told him some things and then it altered his perception of her. And that is what it really is stemming from. Not anything that he saw per se. But at the same time, saying that somebody has a stage name and then acting as if that's not what you meant, it is kind of fake. But it's also being semantical and making it a thing of semantics. So Sharice is explaining her behavior and things like that. And notice how in previous seasons, Tommy has really checked some people on stage right he's really checked them but in this particular instance you notice he's not checking zoe for continuously saying that cherise is fake as f he's not checking him he's not putting him in his place he's not telling him he's disrespectful he's not giving him a lecture he's simply telling him hold on which is baffling to me because you should have the same energy for everyone if you're gonna dismiss tom and you're going to dismiss Jerry. You should be able to dismiss Zoe for the same disrespect. But apparently I heard that when it's people from his fraternity. He tends to be a little bit more lenient on them as far as how he communicates. That in itself is unfair. Because Zoe has been disrespectful. So they're replaying the whole alleged love triangle and you could see Killer's facial expression. She's feeling, I don't know, weird, awkward, reviewing or seeing back the things. And then we see a never before seen footage. So remember when at the end we saw uh, Randall tell her he's not choosing her, but then we never got to see what Mike told her. We obviously knew he rejected her, but they never showed the footage of how he did it or what he said. And that's what the never before seen footage was about. And he's basically telling her, yeah, it could be a match, but it's not one that I would like to pursue. Now, both of their ways of communicating it to her was very cut and dry and very mean, which I feel like she did not deserve. But... I guess they were matching or trying to, or they felt as if she, that was how it was best to convey to her. Um, of course, she was, she talked about not feeling good about being rejected. Of course, nobody feels good about being rejected. But all in all, I feel like it's a blessing in disguise because do you think Jamala is having fun with Randall right now? According to what I see, I don't see them being lovey-dovey and having the greatest love experience i've ever seen and for mike and brandy mike is not any type of catch so i feel like she came out on top because why would you want to be with any of these men yes it's embarrassing to be humiliated on screen but still outside you're probably winning killer is being a little bit of a mean girl because why would you say why am i here when these people are discussing their connection chill 
like take a moment it's definitely not the mike and brandy show but everybody has their segment and that's their moment just allow them to have their moment you can definitely see that this clearly still affects scala and she's still a little bit bitter about the result but still so Kayla feels as if Mike is on some BS and he chose the lesser connection. That's Kayla's perspective. But I feel what Kayla feels to understand is maybe you guys just had two different perceptions of this one reality. You thought one way, but Mike thought another way. Because according to what we saw as viewers, we definitely saw it was very clear to us that he was on Brandy's side. There was no point where the viewers were ever confused. The viewers were never like, oh my gosh, I don't know who he's going to pick. We were always led to believe that he would choose Brandy. So, Kayla's perspective, we don't get because we never saw it. We don't understand it. We don't know what she's talking about, you know. And that has to be frustrating for her. And then... We see Katie and backstage asking Randall what does he think about his connection, saying that she had a stronger physical and sexual connection with Mike. He is not about the drama, so of course he's not really going to reply, but Katie is super messy. Then she's blaming Zoe because remember, Kayla went on a date with Swayze and Zoe, and the winner of the push up thing had to got a kiss from her, and Zoe won, and he or the bowling thing and so end up kissing her and that was the most awkward kiss i had ever seen in my entire life i don't know what it is because killer is beautiful but for some reason these men are not really attracted to her and it might very well be her communication style it might be that they're not intimidated but they prefer to go an easier route as opposed to wanting or having to contend with her that's probably what it is brandy's just sitting there super uncomfortable so miss dominica pipes up and she says she was surprised when she saw that brandy and mike made a connection or like you know bonded and whatever because she feels like she and brandy has a similar personality and he she felt like he downplayed their connection so dominica drops a bomb shell she basically lets it be known that mike is dating another woman he's dating another woman but he's supposedly so in love with brandy that is crazy so Tommy asked Mike and of course he denies it and he would because if you've noticed Mike's behavior, he treats Brandy like she's the wife and so any type of accusations of anything or any type of connection with anyone, he downplays it in front of Brandy. That's not to say that he doesn't still have other people that he's fooling around with. It doesn't say that he's not. He didn't still have a big connection with Bra with Caleb. But what he tends to do, his his behavior throughout the show has been, let me downplay things in front of Brandy to kind of save Brandy's feelings. So I cannot one hundred percent believe him, you know. And listen to what he said. He said, outside of this, everything else is irrelevant. What does he mean by outside of this? Because my interpretation of this was the show. Outside of the show, everything is irrelevant. Which means on this show, you know, just like you have a TV wife. And on while you guys are doing the sitcom, that's your TV wife. On this sitcom, outside your real life relationships make no difference to your, your on stage persona, right? That's, it. That's the same vibe I'm getting from what he's saying here. In this show, the script was I was supposed to end up with Brandy. So that's what it's going to be for this show. Outside of it, that's outside of it. I'm not mixing outside of this situation with inside of this situation. That's what it, it, it reads like to me. You know, whatever I do outside of this is not to do with the with with the show but what i do with brandy is to do with the show because i met her on the show and we were supposed to be um 
just like this. So it just screams very fake and scripted the way he said these words. She feels like Mike didn't give her a fair shot. And I would not, that's not a hill I would want to die on because I feel as if I cannot be upset with someone for deciding to ignore me or deciding not to be interested in me. Like it's their prerogative whether they're interested in you or not. There's nothing you can do. You know, as much as the show is to talk to and be open to as many people as possible, we all know that it's human nature sometimes to just narrow your choices down to one or two people. And the, what if anybody else tries to get into that loop, they get no opportunity with you. So I don't know if I would argue that thing Dominica is arguing because it's his choice. So Kadian drops a little bit of tea backstage and says that Mike said it was because Kayla kissed Zoe that's the reason why he never really took Kayla seriously. And if that kiss didn't happen, he would have taken her more seriously. And we saw that as well when he said, oh, Zoe kissed you, Randall kissed you, so I don't want to kiss you. So I don't know, maybe, but we all concluded that that was an excuse. So I don't think that was the real reason. Here, Katie and goes opening her big mouth, causing drama. And um, although I'm not making her mouth responsible for Swayze's actions because he's a grown man, I don't know why, but he felt the need to want to get physical with Zoe because he's talking about, oh, um, Swayze, it would have been Swayze's fault if he won. And then Swayze's talking about, if I was older, I would have won. I think what he's saying is bowling is for old people and people that are older win bowling matches, I guess. That makes no sense to me. Maybe it's a, an, another issue that is being like, I don't know. Maybe they had a previous argument, but it just seemed stupid to me. So he takes off shirts and then Zoe decides to leave. He's talking about he has some place to be. And I guess that was the, that's what broke the camel's back and he decided to just leave. So bizarre. Then the producer is following Zoe and then he's talking about he has money to make, he has a flight he has to catch, he has a $35 million portfolio and the show doesn't make him money, which is all facts because that show does not make these people any money um but still the way he went about it was very abrupt and came from nowhere you know and um that just is, that just seems to be the nature of alonzo he just moves whenever he feels uncomfortable he leaves he doesn't stay he doesn't give warnings he just leaves well he did give a warning he said he was out but still that was weird and he passed right next to Swayze and Swayze did nothing. So I don't understand all that piping up Swayze was doing. Granted, Zoe is an a-hole, but still. Can we talk about the fashions a little bit? The women's fashions. So there was a lot of yellow. There was too much yellow. We had like four women wearing yellow or yellowish tones. I think Cherise had yellow on, Kadian had yellow either yellow or gold. I just felt like it was too much yellow. Um, Kadian was looking like Big Bird with the feathers and this extremely high cut dress. I liked what, uh, I liked what Looney had on. I also liked Looney's hair. But as I was just talking about all those yellows and golds, Tommy makes the same react, re response when he sees all of them. Well, most of them on stage all the women literally have gold yellow ish tones on them and they look like a girl group so here goes that shakira conversation again that we were so irritated with on the show and i feel like anytime it's brought up we're gonna continue to be irritated because for one we don't know the details of the situation like we like i agree with kayla she made this big deal and we still don't know what the problem is. We still have no clue what she's upset about. 
Kedia never spilled any details. Kedia never said what truly happened. And if Kedia did say that, we did not get that information. We were not privy to it. So the funny thing is like she's still very much upset about it. She's still holding back tears about it. And it's like, like I just am not in the mood to really get into that with her again, honestly. I just really don't want to talk about this situation anymore. This whole back and forth about Shakira being sensitive about what Kadian said. Kadian didn't even see anything. But I guess because she alluded to the fact that you had trauma. I feel like she feels like everybody knows she has trauma. So everybody sees her as this woman that has baggage. I think that's what it is. It's not even that she disclosed any detail. But... She kind of made it known that Shakira has some issues. And I think that's what pisses Shakira off. But if she really didn't say it in any way that was bad or that was with bad intention. So I'm over the situation. Sharice is defending Kadian and saying, yeah, you're making this. Everybody, I think, on the cast feels as if Shakira is making this a big thing when it's really not that big of a deal. And audience alike like we're so over this conversation and we want it to be over but the dress i hate the least actually in all these dresses is shakira's dress like what's going on with her dress i i really hate the way her dress looks i don't like it um that's probably my least least favorite dress i like sharice's dress i like my favorite dress would have to be either tranica's dress from what i'm seeing looking like looking at it sitting down and i also love brandy's dress but that conversation i don't want to talk about this anymore tommy touch touches on that backstage stuff and I still don't know what the situation was. And Swayze doesn't know what the situation was. I guess it was the way Zo said it. I don't even think it's the way Zo said it. I just feel like he's already irritated with Zo for whatever reason. Um, he used that as an opportunity to want to fight with him. Because that's some nonsense. Anyways, let's move on. So they get to LJ's situation, which is another situation I don't particularly care too much about. Um, I think him and Chanika seem to still be in a very good space, at least when that reunion was being taped. So let's see how that relationship goes. Wow, so Tommy asked them who is dating LJ. Sharice raises her hand, which is shocking to me. Uh, Looney raises her hand, which is shocking to me. And Tronica raises her hand. That's crazy. Wow. Meanwhile, he's still cool with his ex. And then he says that if you meet somebody genuine, you cannot just, like, let that go. You So, essentially, that's what men tend to do. Like, they tend to say, okay, I don't want you, but I want you around. And whenever they they want something from you, they're, co- they're going to come and take it from you. But that does not mean that they want anything serious with you. So, that ex is just leaving herself open to being used. And if, she, if she's okay with that, that's fine with me as well. The funny thing about this show is that even though some people left earlier... It, it doesn't feel as if, oh, who's this person? I don't remember that person. It more feels like, it feels better now that they're back into the loop. Because that last couple of episodes was boring. You know, it doesn't even feel like, oh, we don't know these people and we don't care. It feels as if, oh, we're happy this, pe- this person is back because this show was so boring without them. Which is crazy to me because I've never had that feeling before. I wasn't angry about LJ's decision to choose work over this thing. As Zoe said, and not because I, I have no problem with Zoe. Like, Zoe is rude, but anyway. As Zoe said, this show doesn't make you money. So you want these people to choose a show that doesn't make them any money over their work when that show is gone and over with and people stop talking about you where are you gonna be able to make money from so i feel like people shouldn't be punished for choosing work over this stupid show this show does not give people money you know 
and there's not even a guarantee that you're gonna end up finding a love match. There's actually less of a guarantee on this show to find a love match. So, I mean, if you have to choose providing for your child versus coming on a, on a show where you're not necessarily gonna find a love match, like obviously the the perfect the best or better choice is to go for your work. When Tommy introduced the segment. The drama segment, I just knew Sharice would be all over that segment. Sharice and Kadian. Because they're just drama starters, you know. And it's funny that they're the ones that, like, connected early on. Only for them to be beefing now. I'm so confused. And in an interview, Sharice was saying, essentially, that they made a pact to still be friends outside of the show. And... I don't know what happened at that reunion, but I just highly doubt that they're still friends. Um, it's just confusing trying to gauge where these two are. Because one moment they're close, one moment they're not talking, one moment they're not friends. I don't understand. Uh, whatever case it is, um, they're obviously not good as friends. So... Sharice and Katie are going back and forth about whether she said sugar daddy or not. And you know, sometimes these arguments are simply semantical. It's just based on wording. I mean, you may not have said sugar daddy, but you may have said my rich man or my rich whatever. You may have said something alluding to a sugar daddy. You may not have used that, that word, but you alluded to a sugar daddy. Sometimes it's as simple as that, but then because she didn't like directly say sugar daddy, it becomes this whole stupid argument that I really cannot stand. And typically when people say they don't even talk like that, you know they're lying because you can say whatever, you know, and, and back it up with, I don't talk like that. You know, that's why you can't really trust people because they'll, they, they show you who they want you to see, not who they truly are. So maybe in front of people, you may not talk that way. But who knows what you say behind closed doors. So how can you possibly say you don't talk like that? We don't know that. We don't know how you talk. And Samson is actually justifying Cherise because he said that Samson, um, somebody said that to him. I think it was Swayze mentioned it to him. So she's not lying. Like at this moment, Kadian is the liar. So Katie and Charisse are going back and forth and then Katie and out of the blue is talking about she will stop the effort of Charisse and they're going back and forth. That was this episode. That was this thing. That was this part. That was whatever. And next episode, we see that they're going to get into what I really want to get into, which is the Jamala, Randall, Kayla, and Tranika situation. That's what I want to get into. That's what I want to know about because clearly... Chanika and Kayla know more than what Jamala and Randall want us to know. And I want to know the, the, the details. I want to know what's like really tea. You know, I'm tired of people going around things, lying, being vague. I want to know what it is. So anyways, you guys, let me know what you think about this particular part one episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Was it giving boring? Was it giving juicy? Tell me what you think in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.